So it is 1030 and it is time for Little Shop of Physics Live to become live again. And this is our final episode of our season. And we've enjoyed so much connecting with people um, over this pandemic year. It's been a crazy, crazy year. And we all agreed that one of our high spots was being able to connect with all you folks every Friday and show you some awesome science things. And we have a bunch of awesome science stuff to show today. And the title of today's show is Everyday Science. And we wanted to come back to a whole bunch of things that folks can try at home. Some we tried before, some we haven't, some we just tried out this morning, which is kind of awesome. We have an action-packed sequence, and you're going to get a chance to see everybody who's been part of Little Shop Physics Live. We're going to have Maude and Casey and Brenna and Emma, and we're going to start with a section on things that don't get wet, and we're over to Brenna for our first yeah, so little the, demonstration. This is definitely something you can try at home. You just need regular cocoa powder. Turns out cocoa powder doesn't like water. It's hydrophobic. So if I take the cocoa powder and I dip it in some water... It, what? It stayed dry? It stays dry, but what's even cooler is if it looks like it's wet, but then if I poke it on the side, let's see if it'll... Oh. It kind of... That water just comes right off. All the water comes right off it. It's kind Whoa. of awesome. And if I try and mix it in here, look at that. It does not... It's, it's, like a, it's not doing it. It's like a cocoa berg. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> and and when you're done, you can make some cocoa. You can just drink this. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no downside. It's a science experiment with a snack at the end, which is awesome. And then Maude has got some other stuff that doesn't get wet. Maude, tell us what we got over here. So we're just bringing back something that was pretty popular. So here I've just got this tray with um, Never Wet, just a hydrophobic spray on it. And... Whoa, and look at those little droplets skitter around. And you can get this stuff at the hardware store, right? Oh, absolutely. Or King Supers, I think I saw it there yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and will those drops, now that you've made some, will they roll around? Because that's gonna be like some foreshadowing for something we're gonna see later. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at the silvery layer. There's like air underneath them. That's what the silveriness is from. It's from a layer of air, so they can't wet the surface. And so they just skitter around and look all silvery and stuff. It's kind of awesome. And also there's some mesh that you made with that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I just have this like little bowl of water here and I took this little metal mesh and metal's usually heavy, metal sinks in water normally, yes. You would think. <laughs> um, so I sprayed it with this. Uh, same never wet stuff, and if I place it in the water, it floats. It's like a boat. It is like a boat. I wouldn't want to be on this boat, though. I gotta <laughs> say, that would so, not be my. Do you think my... we'll hold up one of the ducks? Okay, I'm bringing over. I'm bringing over witch duck. Oh, witch duck should be on the on the crazy mesh boat. Witch ducks, and I'm. Oh, I oh, did not witch like. Duck is oh, heavy. oh no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, the too boat just, the boat doesn't even want to deal with the witch duck. <laughs> witch duck is too much. And here's something you can pick in your yard, and if you can't pick it in my yard, you can pick it in uh, your yard. You can pick it in mine because I have a lot of these in my yard. <laughs> right, you have Brenna. a lot of kids in your yard. <laughs> <laughs> here I have some dandelions. I know y'all have seen these before, especially if you live here. But it turns out that something about the way that dandelions have their little feathery things, um, they don't like water. So if I take this dandelion and put it upside down and I dip it in some water, you can see Whoa. it's not getting wet. It it's, kind of gave up on its life, but that's fine. It's silvery. And if I pull it out, you can see most of it does not get wet. And if I try it with another one, we'll just give those and to my four And will it float months. like the never wet thing? What was that? Will it float like the never wet thing? Like if you just put it in the water, will it float? Oh, I mean, yeah. Yep. Because it doesn't oh. want to get wet, and so it's, it's floating. And I just dip it. Awesome. Look at that. The majority of it stays in. Stays intact. dry. Stays dry. Kind of awesome. 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 And that's because of little structures on the dandelions. They're little feathery structures that help them catch air. And those feathery structures also keep them from getting wet. That is awesome. And there are other things that work this way. And Maud has got an example over on her end of the table. And so we had Brenna with the botany world. I'm over here with my example from the the nice animal world. And so I've just got here a few different feathers and types of feathers. And so here is one. And if I just drop a bunch of water on it, it beads up. Whoa. I can kind of 
It's like the move it underwear. around. So I don't need an underwear. I just need a bird. Just need bird feathers, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's because of the structure too. Those there's a lot of really really fine structures and feathers. If you haven't looked at a feather in a microscope, you must do that. They do are that. very cool. They're amazing. Then if I grab one of these uh, real fluffy feathers, see the end that isn't super fluffy still does the same thing, but oh. the super fluffy end that doesn't have as much of that like strong microstructure Ooh. gets wet. And so Ooh. if I just, it floats, but if I dunk it in the water, oh, it got all wet. It gets all wet and kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's the structure. Last time we saw structure that made, or a while ago, we saw structure that made color. You can also have structures that keep things dry. And the creatures that use this, water striders, if you've ever seen them. And here's a picture of a water strider from a little body of water near my house. And it's just floating on the surface of the water. And that's because it's got structures like in the dandelion or like in the feathers, really fine microstructures on its feet that trap air. And the air and the water don't mix. And it's floating on a little cushion of air trapped in structures on its feet, which is kind of awesome. And Brenna has got something else that doesn't get wet. This is a commercial product, but it's so awesome that we need to share it. It is pretty awesome. It's called Amazing Sand. But basically, the sand is hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. So if I pour some in my jar here. Well, some of it floats. It, it does, because it really doesn't like it that does not, water. It does not want to get in the water. And if I poke it down, look at that. It coats my spoon. Whoa. But... Let me pour some more in. I got a whole bunch of different colors, so we gotta we gotta try them all. Let's mix it up. We got green, and, and it looks got... like it's at the bottom. It's nice and silvery. It is, and that's because no water is actually touching it. Oh, so it's got a layer of air. So it's water and air, and I get a reflection from that layer. And if you bring up a scoop full of sand from the bottom, Look it looks that. like it's wet, but it is dry. Dry. Dry as a bone. So you can build a sandcastle underwater. That I can. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talented enough to do that, um, but I can definitely squish it around. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Brenna basically is the next being, engineer. <laughs> it's being held in place by, it's being shrink-wrapped by, by, by some water, water. Yep. which is kind of awesome. Yep. And if I add some soap, I can kill all the fun. Oh, Moral no. of the story oh, is no. that soap kills fun. <laughs> So, <laughs> and then if you and then if you stir it, oh, mm, it's not. Look at oh, that! Oh, we lost the silvery. Yep. And if I pull some of this up, you can see some of it's getting wet. Oh. Now I made kind of this nice sand soup oh my gosh. that yeah, I got sand here. Soup. Oh. Brenna killed the fun and made a horrible. And soup. you know what else soap kills though, which is kind of awesome. The virus. Viruses. <laughs> oh yeah. For the same reason, you have stuff which is hydrophobic, and soap makes it mix with water, and that's a good way of killing viruses, which is kind of awesome. Next, we're going to do some kitchen chemistry stuff, and we did a whole episode on that. We brought back a couple of favorites, and I think we're going to go over first to I think it's Brenna first. I Brenna's got some so. cabbage. Cabbage juice. Yep. Mm, tasty. It's delicious. So here I have some. <laughs> red cabbage that I've made sort of this nasty cabbage tea out of and I poured off the liquid into these bottles and this is just one of my favorite things ever so if I put this white paper behind there and I add an acid and a base I'll add my base first so here's some baking soda and this is just red cabbage water right you just boiled red cabbage yep. oh it turned blue color change and then if I add the vinegar to the other one look at that whoa Super Super red. Cool. So this is a pH indicator, cabbage juice is. Um, and yeah, you can just play with it and add acids and bases and see what it does. That is it's awesome. awesome. And then Maude has got a couple different kinds of tea that work this way. Absolutely. So, you know, Brenna over there with her cabbage is, is real smelly. So if you want to avoid some of that, <laughs> um, I've got two different types of tea here. Um, this blue one over here is just butterfly uh, pea flower tea. And then this more red one over on that side is just some hibiscus tea and I'm just going to do the same thing as Brenna I'm going to get some vinegar and I will so blue tea blue plus, tea vinegar plus vinegar is turns kind of purple whoa and maybe if I stir it around a little bit yeah that is awesome definitely different. definitely a different color now let's try the vinegar in the red tea Red tea plus vinegar turns into... Question marks? <laughs> it turned a little lighter. A little lighter. 
But I bet when you put in some baking soda, something's going to happen. Yeah. Wow, look at that purple. That blue tea definitely turned purple. Now we're putting in baking soda in the blue tea. And this is butterfly pea flower tea. And we got it on the internet. Whoa, and it turns green, which is awesome. That's awesome. It's a really pretty teal color. Oh, yeah. And if you take the hibiscus tea and you put in some baking soda, it turns. It should turn something. Oh, yeah, it's turning like dark. That's turning like a dark purple. Yeah, Ooh, dark purple weirdness. color. Wow, that is Oh, awesome. yeah, that's like black. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> it's, it is. It's kind of like, yeah, black. Wow, that wow. Is not, does not look nearly as tasty when you put the baking soda inside it. No. That is awesome. You can also do this with turmeric tea as well, I believe. Awesome. And I'm going to show you another color changing thing. And this is something you can do with these special pens. And we have these pens, and we just got them in an office supply store. And they say they're erase, erasable pens. And when you erase them, what you're actually doing is you're changing the color of the ink. And we can demonstrate this. So I'm going to write something on my piece of paper here. And the ink is black. But if I take the ink and I get it warm, Maud and Brenna made things change color by changing the pH, by doing the acid and base. I'm going to change this by getting it warm. So I have a heat gun. I bring it in here. And if I add. Wow, it just the system. Oh, my writing goes away, but the writing is not gone. It's not like pencils when you erase it. The writing is still there. And I can prove that because if I take some really, really cold liquid here and I'm going to pour this on there, what will happen is heat makes the ink change from black to clear and cold will make it change from clear back to black. And oh, like I see this. it. There oh, it goodness. is. You, which means you can't get rid of little shop of physics that easily. We're not going to be slowed down by a little temperature change or a pandemic or anything like that. We are still with you. So you can make it come back again. Something else that works this way, I just want to show folks, and I just, this was sitting here. This is a receipt. Um, from the grocery store because Maude picked up a bunch of stuff. And I'm sorry I threw this <laughs> in at the last minute, so poor Patrick. Um, so I take this receipt, and the way they make the writing on the receipt is they have heat. So if I take my heat of my receipt and I put the heat gun on it, uh-oh, no more receipt. It just turns black. So there isn't actually ink in that printer. What's happening is I'm just heating up a little print head and making the colors that way. So those are things that change temperature, not with pH, but with color. And we're over to, we have one more example of something, of some kitchen chemistry. Over to Brenna. This is more disappearing ink, I think. Yes, it is. So have you ever been highlighting something in your book or whatever, and then you're like, oh, I, I did the wrong thing, man. Well, I have a way to get rid of it. So we've showed this before. Um, but if you're highlighting away and you decide, well, I don't really like what I, I just did, you can get rid of it using either a lemon or vinegar, your choice. So here I have a green and a yellow highlighter. That's what we found works best, but it's good to play around. And if I take a slice of a lemon and I rub it on my um, no. highlighter, you're erasing the highlighter goes away. with a lemon. going to do this to all my uh, college textbooks oh, so I can sell the green, them back at a higher price. The, that, actually, people do that. I think people do that. They do. And actually, the green kind of turned blue, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. So we found that the lemon really takes away the yellow color, and green is kind of a combination of yellow and blue. Oh, my gosh. Um, so what's left over is the blue. And if I do it with vinegar, a Q-tip soaked in vinegar, it works a little bit faster. But you can see... I can erase it that way as well. Oh my gosh, you made those colors go right away. I did. It's kind of awesome. That so. is kind of awesome. And so it's more ink that changes color with pH, just like all the liquids did. And now we're going to move on to talking about water. And water has got a lot of special properties. And Maude is going to show us one. Yep. So here, I'm just going to, I've got this balloon here that I'm just going to make super staticky. And I'm going to mess up my hairdo for y'all because, you know, can't never say I was... It's, it's for science. It's for I was not kids. dedicated. <laughs> so I'm just going to get a good steady stream of water and going. And watering the floor mice, which is awesome, as we like to do. Come on. Wow! And it bends it right to the side. Look at that water move. And you could try this with your kitchen tap. 
And mind if you put it up closer to where it comes out, you're going to get an even better result. Watch this. Oh yeah, bend in that stream of water. Bend in it to the side. Awesome. Awesome. And that has to do with the electrical properties of water. The electrical properties of water also let it do something kind of amazing that Brenna is going to show us. Yep. So it turns out dry erase markers are kind of staticky. Um, and that's why they stick to things. So if I draw a little picture on the inside of this tank here, I'm just going to draw a stick man or woman or whatever. Stick human. Stick person. Yeah. Stick human. Stick student. Stick student. There, there we, we go. go. And I'm going to draw in Make a couple different colors just so we can see. I got a red marker here too. Well, the red doesn't want to show up very well. And but we decided okay. this was best on glass, right? So this is dry yes. erase marker on glass. Yep. And if we take, first I'm going to take my tank like this. And then we pour a little bit of water in there. I can actually get these marker people to lift up off of the glass. So if you watch close, and I'll try to get Patrick a good angle here. So you're tipping the water slowly. Yep. And I'm gonna lift those people right off the glass. Whoa! Look, Look at the that The black girl. one is lifting up very well. Oh my gosh, they're swimming. Yes, they are. <laughs> or they're drowning, you know, either way. No, we're, no, they're we're swimming. swimming, Maud. <laughs> That one's if dancing. they're students, they're Woo! drowning right now. That I that. Oh, <laughs> the black one's dancing. Oh, he's visiting the blue one. He's going to say hi to his friend. Oh, gonna... kind of tipped over a little bit. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they're hugging. They're giving they're a hugging. hug. They're and hugging. now <laughs> the black one's torso is just ripped apart. Hopefully That's they're fine. fully vaccinated. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of awesome. And that is an awesome thing to try. Glass plate plus dry erase marker plus water is awesomeness. And now we're going to show you another cool thing with the stickiness of water. It sticks to certain things real well. And that lets us do some magical things. So here I've just got a uh, glass bottle that I filled all the way to the tippy top with water. And I've got um, some of the pandemic's favorite material here. Oh, toilet yes. paper. Yes. So oh, I need a little bit more. You want to wet it like that, and then if I turn it over, woo -hoo -hoo. oh my gosh, it's the being water held in place up. by the toilet paper. <laughs> it's it's not actually it's from our bathroom, and this is not high quality TP. Trust me. <laughs> but yeah. That is awesome. And so the, the stickiness of the water with the fibers and with the glass holds everything in place. And now we're going to do some switching of our personnel. And while that's happening, I have a hot plate here. And I'm going to show you a little pressure demonstration you can do. So I have a can right here. And inside the can is a little tiny bit of water. And in, inside the can, the water is starting to boil. And as the water is boiling, it's turning into water vapor. And the water vapor is going to displace the air inside there. And then if I subsequently cool it off, that water vapor will turn back into liquid water. And that's going to dramatically reduce the pressure inside the can. And this is something that folks can easily try. So I just have, I'm just using my little hot plate. You can use a burner on the stove. And this is something you want to do with parental supervision because it is a little bit hot. But if I take my can and I get it nice and boily, I can do something cool with it. But that's going to need just another minute to boil. I was not good and I didn't prepare as much as I was supposed to. Oh, wait, hang on. Nope. We're going to come back to that if we can. Are we, is Casey ready for a, a rocket? Oh, she can be. All right. <laughs> While we wait. Sorry. That, that was my bad. Okay. So what I have, since we're talking about pressure now, we did this a while ago. Our Alka-Seltzer rockets. Um, what I did was strap our Ram friend to a bottle and throw in some Alka-Seltzer tablets. And so I am missing the cork. Interesting. We'll do the mini rocket. Mini rocket. Mini yeah, rocket. Let's do it. Sorry. Let's see here. And we fill it up, and the Alka-Seltzer starts to fizz, making some pressure. I hope that's enough. We'll f we'll find out. And pressure is building up, and I'm expecting a dramatic lift <laughs> off sometime soon. I may not have enough in that one. Hang on. Thank you. <laughs> well, 
Okay. Yes. Had enough off. for sure. <laughs> Just a little bit of patience is all we needed to make that go. That is awesome. That is awesome. And then Emma is going to show us a little pressure thing with an egg in a bottle. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this egg right here, I just have a normal hard boiled egg. And as you can see, it does not fit through here, but I want it in that bottle. So I am going to take some boiling water. Just pour it into my, my bottle here. Just a little. And I have gloves for my safety. Cover it up with a card and shake it up so it gets really hot in there. While I wait for more water to boil. And you're right now you're heating up the bottle, right? Yes. Awesome. Getting Get that bottle nice and toasty. Lots of hot air in there, and it's really hot, which is why I have safety gloves on. Awesome. So the bottle is nice and toasty. Yep, and then I'm going to make it even toastier by adding more boiling water. I'm going to put my egg on there. Oh, and then the... And what I might be tempted to do, well, actually, is that going? Yeah. Oh, there it's going. I can see, I can see <laughs> action happening. Give it some time. Give it some time. It's a little, little tight squeeze in there. And so there's less pressure inside the bottle because inside the bottle, we have water vapor, which is turning back into liquid water. So I'm getting lower pressure inside there and I have higher pressure outside and our egg should be working its way into the bottle. It's definitely moving, slowly but surely. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Come on, baby. You got this. <laughs> and boom! There it goes. I heard the pop. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to pour the water out now, and I can get this egg out. Too. Awesome. Let's see it. I don't believe it. So as you can see, it's pretty stuck in there. <laughs> but I'm just gonna take my shield off for a second. So you're blowing air in the bottle. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Extra pressure inside the bottle. Push that egg right out. That is awesome. Mm, yummy. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> and I got boiled egg in the face, which is The giraffe awesome. was almost it, in the water. Again, it's for, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. <laughs> and let's go over it. And Casey has got a stomp rocket, I think, right here. I do, yeah. So what we did here was we took an old uh, two-liter bottle and attached to it a bike tire. And if you go to a bike shop and just ask them if they have any old tires they're wanting to get rid of, they should hopefully give you one. Um, tubes, we need old tubes. A, oh, I'm sorry, old tube, sorry. And cut it in half, and we duct taped it to the top of this bottle, and then duct taped it to just a piece of um, pipe. You could use the um, your vacuum attachment, that could work. Um, just whatever you have laying around, just needs to be a hard piece of pipe. And then if you take it, and you stomp on it. I'm going to try and point it this way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ready? Bring it on. <laughs> okay. Whoa. <laughs> Lift off. And that was an just... awesome pressure demonstration right there. That was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. And then Emma has got a little art project going on over yes, here. Yes, I do. So you can make really cool art with markers, just drawing normally. But you can also make airbrush art. And here I have a picture of a cat that I did. As you can see, it's a little it's a little fancier than just a regular marker. Um, it's, it's pretty cool if you ask me. I think I did a great job. But I am going to show you how to make art like this. Um, I just have a regular straw here, and I poked a hole in it towards the bottom, if you can kind of see that. And then I'm going to take a regular marker, put the, the tip of the marker inside the hole, and just... Whoa. Oh my gosh. And you're like making a little airbrush with a marker and a straw. Yeah, and it makes a little, little splatter art. That is awesome. 
looks like you've colored your whole hand there. Emma. I did color my whole hand. There. <laughs> and that's okay. And you got your hand colorful too. No downside there. <laughs> And then Casey has got kind of an awesome pressure thing. She's got, are you gonna break this bottle, I understand? I am, so here I just have, it's an old Izzy bottle, but any bottle that um, more or less goes straight down at the sides. And then I have a weighted bouncy ball, you could say. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smack this right on the top of the bottle, try to keep my arms still. Let's we'll see if I can do this. It might take me a couple. I hear it clanking, and? Oh. I'm not very good at it. Oh. Gosh darn it. You're getting there. I'm getting there. Bring My hands up. are real wet. One really hard whack. Okay. Get that hand dry. Hold on. Bring it up. Bring it down hard. Okay. And then you're going to push the this bottle so down, wet. and then the water is going to stay put. And then there's the water moves, the bottle moves down where there's a little vacuum pocket underneath the water. Okay. And it's. Oh my goodness. The air on top as it pushes it down. Let me try it off. Hold on. And then it's going to slam down into the bottle of the bottle. And when it slams down into the bottom of the bottle. I can do this. It's gonna I break. promise. Oh, you got this. You got this. <laughs> Maud's really good at this. I'm new to the, the skill. Yay! Oh, there nailed goes. it. Just hung nailed on it. by the label. <laughs> awesome. And that was not Casey that broke the bottle, because that would be at the top. What broke the bottle? The water. Yeah, the water. So we call that the water hammer, which is an awesome thing. <laughs> and this is a brand new thing we're trying for the first time. We tried this for the first time this morning. Over to Emma. Yeah. Um, so here I just have a hot plate. Very, very hot. It feels like summertime over here. Um, and a really hot pan. And I'm just going to take some Orvies and throw them on the pan. Kind of like I'm cooking them. Oh, look at them dance. And are they singing? Yeah, they're making that weird noise. The Orvies are dancing and singing. Look at them go. And listen to them chitter. Some of them are broken, unfortunately. Those sad ones are just cooking. <laughs> it's lunch. That is awesome. And it, you could do that if you don't have Orbeez. You could do something similar with water too, couldn't you? Yeah, so... If I just take water from my little Orbeez container over here and I put the water on the pan it has this really cool effect kind of like the never wet oh Where yeah you can see a up. silvery layer underneath there so it's not touching the pan it's riding on a little layer of steam and look at that thing chase around the pan we've been calling it a water worm <laughs> That water worm is awesome. It's just kind of cruising around the pan like crazy, which is very, very cool. And it's got a silvery layer underneath it. So it's a layer not of air, but a layer of steam, of water vapor right underneath it. That was the same layer of steam that was making the Orbeez dance. Mm -hmm. That is kind of awesome. And we're going to finish with a couple of quick demonstrations with liquid nitrogen right here. This is some liquid, and this is not an everyday object. It's the one not everyday thing. Really, really cool. If you get air cold enough, it turns from being a gas into being a liquid. But there was a layer of steam that was underneath the water that kept it from touching the pan. When I stick my hand in here, there's the same thing. There's a layer of steam that actually keeps it from boiling my hand. And I'm not going to do that for minutes, but if I do it for seconds at a time, the boiling air makes a cushion that keeps my hand from getting too cold. Now we have a grand finale that Casey is going to do for us. If we take this super cold liquid and into it, we pour a super hot liquid. Let's <laughs> see what happens. Ready? And let's do it. Okay. 
And that super hot liquid just makes that liquid nitrogen boil like crazy oh. and makes a mess. And I can't think of a better way to finish the show by making an awesome, awesome mess. I want to thank everybody for being with us during this crazy year. We will be back next year and we will be in touch over the summer about what Net Little Shop of Physics Live is going to look like. But we're not done. We are not done. So we will be in touch. And then I want folks who have ideas for shows we could do, go ahead and throw those in the chat. And as we go out, we're going to roll a video from the year of some bloopers and things that didn't quite exactly go as planned that Emma has compiled for us. Thank you very much. Thanks to Emma and Brenna and Casey and Maude and Patrick and Adam and everybody behind the scenes. And we're going to roll a little bloopers video. Take care, folks. Have a great summer. <laughs>